So what we learnt in the last class? Can you recollect something? We went through nested loops. We went through break and continue statements, arrays, single dimensional arrays, and we took up some exercises on arrays. We have taken up many exercises on all these concepts. Today's class we will continue with arrays. Uh, we'll uh, look at more interesting concepts on arrays. So today's class, the agenda is 2D arrays, reading and writing from 2D arrays and we'll take up some exercise on 2D arrays. We'll go to strings, we'll have some introduction to strings, string methods and then we'll finally wind up with some exercises on strings. So that is our agenda for today's class. Okay. So 2D arrays and uh, reading and writing from 2D arrays, exercise on 2D array strings. Before even going into that, we have a few problems from our previous class that's pending. Remove or display only duplicate elements from a sorted array. Sort an array of elements using bubble sort and reverse the contents inside the array. So I want you to carry out all these three exercises now on your laptops or on a sheet of paper. So we'll start with sorting an array of elements using bubble sort in Java. We'll see how to do that. We'll start coding on this. Uh, sorting an array of elements using bubble sorting technique. So you're going to get the array of elements from the user. So we'll say system dot. We'll just print a message to the user saying enter numbers. So we'll get an array of fine numbers here. So we'll use the scanner object new scanner system dot in and then how will you declare an array that can hold five elements you say int a square brackets is equal to mu in five so you have declared an array that can hold five elements and how will you read in five elements inside the array you can use a for loop for i will have a variable int i is equal to zero here so this variable I'm going to use i is equal to 0, i less than. So you can use a dot length here because it will take five elements anyway, i plus plus. And then I will use scan every element is equal to input dot next in. So you have finished scanning the elements. Now you have to go in for uh, bubble sorting technique so for n elements in an array maximum n minus 1 passes you will need and every pass how many comparisons you are going to make n minus i comparisons where n is the number of elements i is the current pass number you are in because in every pass you will have the maximum number you know moving to the last part of the array so you have to look into the concepts of bubble sort we all know all these things we have learned that earlier so we will again start uh, our sorting technique for i is equal to 0, i less than a dot uh, length minus 1 passes we need, n minus 1 passes and then i plus plus. So in every pass what we are going to do here is uh, for int j is equal to 0, j less than, so it is index minus i, a dot uh, length minus 1 is the index, minus i is the current pass number and then we will do j plus plus. So what we are going to do in every pass is if a greater element comes you know, before a smaller element then we are going to swap these elements. So how are you going to do swap? You will use a temporary variable for swapping. So we will have a temporary variable declared here. So what we will do is we will move, we will have this condition check if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 then what we are going to do is we are going to do a simple swap here temp is equal to we are going to move whatever that is there in a of j to temp and a of j is going to get whatever that is there in a of j plus 1 and uh, what is going to go to a of j plus 1 is going to be whatever that is there in temp so we have done a swapping so that should sort our array and uh, we can go ahead and print our entire array out see how will you print an array you can use for i is equal to 0, i less than a dot length, i plus plus and then you can just say system dot out dot print ln and then you can print an array by giving a of i. 
that's one way of printing an array we'll see how to print an array using enhance for loop in java got it so let us uh, go and uh, run this one check whether this one works let's execute this so, so enter numbers uh, we'll enter some five uh, numbers not in the sorted order three two five four one so you get that in the sorted order sorted order out one two three four five so there's one more way of printing an array out this is like the conventional method we have an enhanced for loop version what is this enhanced for loop version it's an easier version so what you're going to do is we are going to have for we're going to declare a variable say int uh, k and we are going to give the array name so every element in this array will be mapped to k and then we can do system dot out dot print ln we can do k we just going to print k out so it automatically takes every element maps it to k for each element in a it's mapped to k and you're printing k we'll run it till the length of the array so this is like an easier version when compared to i is equal to 0 i less than a dot length so for printing an array you can use this enhanced uh, for loop version let's check whether this one works too is this one working yeah we'll give some so again you get this so in java you have this enhanced uh, for loop for each element in an array that is the for each loop so we have done with uh, we are done with bubble sorting the next thing is uh, next exercise we have to take is uh, what is the next exercise see there's one more way of sorting things out uh, in java you know you can write this uh, bubble sort technique and sort an entire array you can do all these things or else what you can do is you can also use a simple uh, uh, you know this java.util dot star also has this arrays class a r r a y s so what you can do is you can just call this uh, class arrays dot and then you can call sort method and then you can give your array name a so it will sort it for you in the ascending order and then when you print it out the sorting is done but uh, you know this uh, particular class has got so many other methods like uh, comparing two arrays and uh, copying one array to another array or searching within an array or converting array to a string so this arrays uh, class supports a lot of other methods java is like an ocean you can just learn about arrays for another two weeks <laughs> so having all the time constraints is very difficult for us to go through every method and understand everything it's not also needed so when the time arises or when you are in an application which needs a lot of sorting or things like that instead of again and again writing code you can call the class use the method okay so you can explore the arrays.sort let's go and check whether this one works too let's execute this uh, so if i enter some numbers 3 2 1 4 5 so it's sorting it 1 2 3 4 5 so you also have a lot of uh, methods in arrays class for comparing two arrays and searching within an array or uh, doing a lot of things there so you can go and explore this arrays uh, class and its methods on your own now let us go to the next problem displaying only unique elements from an sorted array the array is received in the sorted format it's in the ascending order how will you do that so the uh, code for that is so let me try and get an array of five elements so we are going to use five elements so that is already there for us and we are not going to sort or we are not going to do anything here what we are going to do is uh, we are going to do run a loop for i is equal to zero for the entire length of the array a dot length i plus plus so we are going to do this and i am going to have a variable j j is equal to zero and I'm, every time I'm going to check if a of i not equal to a of i plus 1. If a of i is not equal to a of i plus 1, I'm going to increment j by 1. And then I'm going to move to this location a of j, a of i plus 1. So I'm just moving all the unique elements to the front of the array. So we'll run a loop from i is equal to 0, i less than equal to j because j contains uh, the index of all the unique elements in front of the array and then we'll do i plus plus and then what we'll do is we'll do system dot out dot uh, println 
and then what we will do here is uh, we will print the uh, a of i all the elements from 0 to j so i hope this should work let me check it out control f11 you two should write your own code and then you have to verify it with mine so enter numbers we are entering it in the sorted order so let me enter 2 2 2 3 3 and 4 okay the problem here is i am running it till the length because we don't have anything a of i plus 1 after the you reach the length right so you have to run it till a of a dot length minus 1 you when you exceed the length you will get an uh, what exception you are getting is array out of bound exception so whenever you get this array out of bound exception you are accessing an array location which is uh, actually not part of your program so you declared an array of size 5 but you are accessing a location 6 or 7 this is one common mistake we do. Let us uh, save this program and run this one again. So let us uh, execute this 2, 2, 2 and then 3 and 4. So 2, 3 and 4. Unique elements are getting printed out. So we will give 1, 2, 2, 3 and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. So this is uh, not my algorithm. I read this book uh, by R.G. Dromi, How to Solve It by Computer. On, uh, he has uh, given his analysis on various algorithms. And uh, he has uh, given this algorithm where he is able to display all the unique elements by just using one single array. And I, th I was very impressed by it, so I went ahead and implemented it. So you can also go through this book, How to Solve It by Computer by R.G. Dromi. Okay, can you take up the next uh, program and finish it off? What is the next program you are going to have? Uh, reverse the contents of an array. So please take that program, reverse the contents of an array. Reverse the contents inside an array. You are not going to just display, you are going to reverse the contents inside an array. So if your array is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you are going to make it as 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You are going to change the contents of the array and display it. Please work on this code. Write code for this. Reverse the contents inside an array. How will you reverse the contents? Uh, you read five elements in the array and uh, for reversing, let's run a for loop. So what we are going to do here is, uh, we are going to do a very simple thing. We are going to run from i is equal to 0 and then i less than a dot uh, length by 2. So we are going to reverse till half of the array. No, we are going to swap contents. And then we will increment i by 1. And then we will also use this uh, temporary variable for uh, swapping. So int temp is equal to 0. So how will you swap temp is equal to whatever that is in a of i will go to temp. And a of i will get whatever that is in a of i. Uh, that is a dot length minus 1 minus i. So index minus i because every time you have to swap the element here and the element there. So it keeps reducing until it comes to the middle. So we will do this and uh, a of uh, a dot length minus 1 minus i what, what it is going to get is it is going to get uh, whatever that is there in temp. So you have swapped all the arrays. We can use an enhanced for loop to print all our variables. Uh, so it is uh, so we will print k out. This simple code should swap the contents inside an array. Let us check whether this one works. So we will go with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is uh, swapping it and then printing it in the reverse. Again the uh, logic here is we have used only one single array and we have swapped it. Again this too is from the same book by R.G. Dromi on how to solve it by computer. Okay. So that is all about our uh, array exercises on single dimensional arrays. I think we had some good exercise or practice on single dimensional arrays. Now let us move to 2D arrays. You know what is a two dimensional array is right. Uh, 
say if you want to store the marks of five students i'll store uh, i'll use a single dimensional array if you want to store the marks of uh, five students in uh, five subjects each student has five marks like that for five students i'll i'll end up with a structure like this so if you are not clear with uh, multi dimensional arrays please revisit your basics so you'll end up with a structure like this say for every student you're going to have five marks 1 2 3 4 5 this is student number 1 so we index always starts from 0 right so we give student number 1 to be 0 1 2 for every student you are going to have a structure so this is for another student so you are going to have 1 2 3 4 5 marks for the student but how will you access a particular mark say if there is a mark 23 here what is how will you access this mark if you call this array to be m so the indexes start from 0 here again the index starts from 0 1 2 3 4 so what is the index for mark 23 you have to access it as 0 and then 0 what is this 0 that is row 0 you can call this to be column 0 so it will access 23 here so like that uh, you can access any element inside your structure that becomes your two, di two dimensional array here so how to work with 2d arrays in java exactly like what you did with uh, c and c++ uh, let's go and uh, declare a 2d array in eclipse and then let's check how to declare a 2d array so we will work with 2d arrays here mm. let me delete everything we will uh, comment this uh, scanner thing all So how to declare a 2D array? We have an array of uh, rows and columns. So you give two square brackets. You can give new int, and then you can give rows and columns here. So it holds uh, two rows and two columns. The same way, like uh, we declared in C and C++. Only thing is, you have to use new operator along with uh, this. This is also allowed, like I told you, right? There are two notations. Even this is allowed. so we will follow the c type declaration which is very easy for us and that's how you declare a 2d array and how will you initialize a 2d array how will you initialize a 2d array so say i have uh, two rows and two columns right so first row comma second row my first row if i have 1 comma 1 and the second row if i have 2 comma 2 and then you give a semicolon at the end that's how you initialize values directly to a 2d array so what is the length of this array we had a dot length for a single dimensional array when i talk about length for this array it just gives me the number of rows in the array so if i just go and print uh, system dot out uh, dot print and then i print a dot length what is getting printed here is actually the number of rows so a dot length gives you number of rows in your array two rows how to find the number of uh, columns so each uh, say i'll just increment this to three columns so that it's we can see the difference so if i have three uh, two rows and three columns so this this is nothing but a of 0 this is nothing but a of 1 so each uh, one is a single dimensional array so if you give a of 0 dot length it gives me the length of the first row if i give a of 1 uh, dot length it gives me the length of the second row so let's go and print what is a of 0 dot length is nothing but length of the first row this row so let's go and execute this one out three so a of 0 dot length is nothing but length of your columns a of a dot length is nothing but number of rows you have is it done so you know how to initialize values you know how to find the length and things like that can we read in values for an a two dimensional array from the user instead of doing this we'll declare the array uh, to hold 2 uh, and 2 uh, can we go and have a scanner class and then we say enter input will uncomment this and then how will you get the input for a two dimensional array we have to run two loops int i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 so you have to use nested loops here 
So I will you run loops? So I is equal to zero. I less than a dot length. I am just going with the number of rows in the outer uh, uh, iteration. I plus plus. Inside this, what we are going to do is for every row, we have to get the input. So for j is equal to zero, j less than. You can give j less than two, or you can give j less than a of i dot length. J plus plus. So for every row, we are going to get the input here. So how we are going to get the input? A of i j is equal to input dot next int. So you have received uh, inputs for all your rows and columns here for a two by two matrix. How can you print a two by two matrix out to the user? You can again run these loops for i is equal to zero. System dot out dot print ln a of ij you can also use an enhanced for loop to print the uh, two dimensional array out so how can you use an enhanced for loop here uh, it's like uh, so what you are going to read from this is every time you read from the array you are going to get an array back first row is written second row is written so you have to declare an array to read an array so every time it returns an array of elements back so from this array of elements i have again a nested for what i am going to do here is for m from k so again from that single dimensional array i am going to read every element and map it to m here m is nothing but int m and then i will do system dot out dot oh no system dot out dot print ln right and then you do just print m if you if you give print and then you print m you can print it in the matrix format is the system dot out dot print ln i'll enforce a new line here so that we display it like a matrix so what you understand from here is uh, you're going to read in the first row map it to a single dimensional array k for every element in k we'll map it to another integer where value m and then we are printing m out to the user so this is how you use an enhanced for loop to print a 2d matrix back you can also use the conventional method of doing things out let's check whether this one works uh, Oh God. Save this. Control F11. So we'll uh, go and check whether this one works. So we'll enter 1, 1, 2, and 2. So you see the matrix displayed back. So you're now ready with uh, 2D arrays in Java. How to print it using an enhanced for loop. You know that, right? The next thing that, that was really, uh, now there's one more thing. That we have to learn when we are working with Java 2D arrays. This is what we have seen now. Printing a 2D array using an enhanced loop also we have seen. In Java, every row in an uh, 2D array can have different size. So first row, so you see here this initialization, first row has got four elements, second row has got uh, three elements. This has got two elements and this has got one element that is allowed so your rows in a 2d array can vary the length of the rows can vary so how will you find the length of each row a of 0 dot length gives me the length of the first row a of 1 dot length gives me the length of the second row that's why i was concentrating on how to find the length of each row independently because you can store uh, you know rows of different sizes in your array What is a dot length? A dot length will print the number of rows you have. Now, can you write me a piece of code which finds sum of all elements inside this array? Sum of all the elements here. So, 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the elements in 4 rows, you have to find the sum and display it. So, what is a dot length? Gives me length of all the uh, number of rows a of 0, a of 1, a of 2 dot length gives me the length of the each row. Can you write code to find the sum of all the elements in the array? Can you please do that? So let's go and initialize that here directly. 
one so its first row is 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 second row is uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 third row is 1 comma 2 fourth row is 1 so you initialize that here and then you give a semicolon at the end now how to find the length of each uh, element so you are going to run for all the number of rows for length of each row this is where it's very helpful it automatically detects the length of each row and then here what you are going to do is you are just going to have a variable sum sum will is initialized to zero here and then what you are going to do is uh, okay that is for reading input right so we'll we'll change it to find the sum sum plus equal to a of ij that's it finally you come out of the array and then you are going to do system dot out dot println we'll do print the sum yes let's check whether this one prints the sum twenty is the sum is it twenty you can sum it and check so in what way this is useful is this a of i dot length and a dot length is you can work with arrays of uh, you know 2d arrays having rows of different uh, sizes so we are now now good with arrays uh, let us go and take up some more exercises on arrays uh, let's check uh, this is where we are I want you to write the code for all the programs now. Read an input matrix, check if the matrix is an identity matrix. Display the transpose of a given matrix, find the sum of two matrices. Sum of rows, yeah, we have already done. We'll skip the third one. We'll do result of two matrices. We'll print. So these are some of the exercises that I want you to complete now. What's an identity matrix? The principal diagonal should have all uh, ones, right? So that's an identity matrix. For people uh, who are new to identity matrix concepts, you might be knowing this. Only thing is, the diagonal element should be one. All the other elements should be zero. Only the principal diagonal should be one. All the other elements should be zero. Read in a matrix and complete this code now. So let's work with an identity matrix. Uh, Okay, let's uh, get in uh, a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's finish this code out. Let's get a 2 by 2 matrix. Uh, <coughs> we don't need some ij will have a of i dot length. We'll get the input to our 2D matrix from the user. So it is nothing but uh, input dot next in. We have scanned the input and how to check if it's an identity matrix or not. We'll again run this nested loop. How will you know whether we are on the principal diagonal element if i is equal to j, 0, 0 and 1, 1. So that is our first condition. If i equals j, then we'll have an AND operator and a of i j should be what? Equals to 1. This is our first condition. or our or is somewhere over here okay or what you're going to check i not equal to j that is we are on 0 1 or 1 0 and what we are going to check this uh, we're going to check this a of ij not equal to 0 we'll just do the reverse way we'll check whether it is not an identity and a of ij i'll just reduce the font size a of ij not equal to 1, uh, not equal to 0. So I am checking whether in the principal diagonal we have something other than 1 and in other places we have something other than 0. So if that is the case, what I am going to do is, I am going to say system dot out dot print not an identity, it is not an identity. And here we should give a brackets parenthesis for the entire condition. And then once when you know it's not an identity for one of the elements, we'll break. 
no need to go and check other things and we'll also have this uh, uh, boolean thing identity we'll have a boolean flag identity is equal to false so initially we'll say we, we are getting and we'll assume that we are getting an identity matrix so boolean identity is true so what we are going to do is we are going to break the inner loop and come out for one of the elements but then the outer loop will again go in and check for another element so it's going to keep on printing not an identity not an identity so you have to break the outer loop to if not identity so what we are going to do is we are just going to break the outer loop also finally we are going to come out of our for loop we are going to check whether the flag is uh, set or not so what you are going to do here is uh, let me delete this we are going to check if it is still identity if the flag is not set to false we are going to do the simple check if identity still remains true then what we are going to say system dot out dot print you are going to say it's an identity matrix that's it so we are done with the code now only this check we are checking whether in the principal diagonal we have something other than 1 or other elements other than the principal diagonal we have anything other than 0 that is the case it's not an identity matrix we say identity is false we break one once when you break this you should also break the outer loop because it will again force for next element and you say it's not an identity again so you finally come out if identity still remains true the flag was never set we say it's an identity matrix i hope this one works uh, let me execute this so let me give an identity matrix as an input 1 0 0 1 this is an identity matrix it's an identity matrix is given out so let's check for other conditions too you should run your code for all these conditions to you give all ones let me run this one again you give all ones not an identity you give 0 1 1 0, 1 0 1 because this is what the mistake uh, students do now you you use such a condition it's going to print again not an identity not an identity like that 0 1 1 0 1 0 not an identity okay. so i want you to carry out the remaining exercises on your own i thought of completing everything today but uh, it's fine you know all these concepts you can carry out addition transpose and some basic programs the next class we will take a look at strings array of strings and all these string handling methods